understand in that period of time. And Angela said, you don't even begin to understand how critical that shift was and what that shift did for you and the people around you. And Angela told me to tell you, Lord wants you to notice he has not rewarded you yet for making the sacrifice that you made. And so Angel Lord said, your sacrifice or your reward is coming by voice activation. And so Angel Lord said, you have to do what we call zakah. The word zakah means to call to remembrance. You have to call to remembrance your sacrifice and put it before God and say, God, I did this, I did this, I did this. Not that he doesn't know, but there's a there, there, there's something that happens when what you did as a kingdom grace flows back through you. And I hear the angel said, as you do that, get ready for reward. Some of the reward is going to surprise you. You're going to be amazed like, God, I never thought that you would see me this way. Uh, the angel told me that some of the reward is going to be so personal, so, so personal. It's going to be like, Lord, you touched my very soul. You touched my very heart and give me some of the desires of your heart. And the angel told me to tell you part of the desires of your heart are highly connected to your family. I see some family members who, who are not close to you. You love them. You didn't separate from them, but they separated from you. But the angel said, I'm about to bridge the gap, I'm about to heal this. I'm about to heal the circle. So you have the grace to go in, into your next. The month of December is going to be a very critical month for you, a month of transition and change. That's the word of the Lord to you. I hope that makes sense to you. Somebody give God some praise. Let me just keep talking. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right. Hallelujah. Who is Deanna, your sister? Is that how you say it? She's my sister, but her name is Deanne Bernard. Deanne Bernard. Deanne, here's the word of the Lord to you. The angel showed me, um, it's like I see something over your head, not negative, neg negatively. I see something over your head that a breakthrough is coming in your life that's going to bring rain see like a cloud of rain bursting over your head to just give you liquidly liquid uh, uh, what is the word i'm looking for giving you no no that's not the word giving you liquidity in your finances uh, that's what i see i see you flowing financially i see an outpouring of rain coming for you to give you the ability to do some delayed things. And so the angel Lord said, it is critical for you to stay in position because this cloud that I see over you, these angels I see over you are location sensitive. And so the angel Lord said, don't make any moves outside of the perfected will of God. And the angel Lord showed me, it took you some season to make some adjustments to get right where God wants you. And the angel told me to tell you, you're right in the center of God's will right now. Rain is coming down on you like you can't even begin to imagine. I prophesied this to you by the month of October. You will be saying, God, I never knew you would rain on me like this. It's a seasonal reward for you. That's the word of the Lord to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Melinda Smith, is that? Melinda? Yes, sir. Hey, Pastor Prue. It's the least, but I'm here on Melinda. <laughs> Here, here's, here's the word of the Lord to you. I saw your hands likened unto Dorcas. Uh, the angel said there, there is an ability in your hands, and your hands in an extended way is your spirit. There's an ability in your hands to create unusual things. The angel said, I'm getting ready to anoint you with the word of wisdom that will give you the ability to have unusual vocabulary and say things in a way that they're not typically said. I don't know what this means, but I see you in the midst of some very intelligent people, some very articulate, loquacious people that you're in the midst of. But the angel said, I'm going to make you one with such a word of wisdom coming through you that you will cause them to be in amazement as the gifts of the spirit by the word of wisdom comes through you. And so the angel said, to, for me to say this to you, it's important for you to do some writing. I see you writing not just like a book, but I see you doing some journaling. I see you doing some... Uh, short stories, uh, just very, just lots of writing. And Angel said, through the writing, I'm going to reveal you to you. That's the word of the Lord. But let me shift here because I just felt something come in here. Uh, mm -hmm. I just felt the healing anointing come on me. So you did it. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. Has anybody here got ha have pain? I want to minister to pain. I just see some pain. I feel pain. Who's got some pain in your body? We got a heel group, okay. <laughs> well, listen, let me talk about my knees. Okay. <laughs> Just tell me whether you got pain or not. Don't give, no, don't give me no details. You got you got pain in your knees? 
Yes. Okay, because I knew I felt pain. Anybody else? I also have pain. My back. <laughs> okay. All right. Listen to me. Follow me now. I'm going to lay hands on you guys, but I'm going to do this differently. Hebrews chapter six says, let, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith towards God, and the laying on of hands. So that verse is saying that there's another level of laying of hands other than putting your hand on a person. Putting your hand on a person's head is the first grade. But mm -hmm. Paul said, the right of this is let us go on to perfection. So when I snap my finger, I'm laying my hands on you. I'm sending my spirit. Mm -hmm. You're going to begin to see a difference. You guys ready now? Yes. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Bang. That's it. Bang. 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 Hallelujah. Bang. 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 Oh, God, I felt, the, I felt the power of God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now get up, get up and test yourself. Whoever it is got pain. Don't look for the pain. Look for the healing. All right. Thank you, Jesus. All right, one by one by one. H how are your knees now? Any pain in your knees? I don't feel any pain in my knees. Set Somebody free. give God some praise. Hallelujah. Who's the other person had pain? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All praises to God. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. One, one at a time, so I have some clarity. Who else had pain? Patricia. Okay, what kind of pain did you have? A knife. Huh? My, my um stomach area feel like my ribs or something. Okay, so what 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 do you feel now? Nothing. Somebody give God some praise. Yeah. Who else? Hallelujah. Um, Mary had pains in her knees, and I'm walking around now, and I don't feel any pain. Praise Somebody God. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Some praise. praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Who else had pain? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. Jesus. Oh. Your Father, thank you, Father. All right. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And thank you, Holy Lord. Ghost. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the name of Jesus. Well, I'm going to get in the word. I'll come back and do some more prophesying in a minute here. But I want to get in the word. Um, I need a reader this morning. Someone give me Colossians. Well, I'll read. I've got it myself. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. All right. It says, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things of earth. Listen, listen to verse 3. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. You are dead and your life is is hid with Christ in God. I want to talk about identity, finding out and discovering by a revelation visitation who you are. When God reveals you to you, most people are a mystery to themselves. I would say 99% of people are a mystery to themselves. You come in this earth, from heaven. He says in the book of Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So God knew you and you knew him in eternity. I submit this to you when you see a, a young baby and those children have a strange expression on their face, particularly toddlers. And they always seem to be looking at something. I submit to you that they, for a season of their life, they're looking back. They have some recall of where they came from. At some point, that changes, and they mm -hmm. become cognizant of where they are. That's when they come into contact with their DNA, and mm -hmm. that came down their generational line, uh, whether it be good, bad, whatever that it may be. And so what happens at that time is the pure essence of who they are, which is in their spirit, who they came to this earth to be and what they were assigned to do, comes in contact with their ancestors. And I'm not talking about this Africanism and all that kind of stuff. It's not what I'm talking about. The ancestors in the generational line, whatever satanic forces, whatever proclivities, whatever unusual behavior, whatever reaches 
that were made in the lineage, they come in contact with that. And so now their purpose is hijacked to a degree because there is this lineage. I love the verse where it says that Abraham gave everything he had to Isaac. If we read that on a base level, that meant he gave Isaac his money. If we read it in the spirit, Abraham told a lie about his sister and said, about his wife and said it was his sister. If you read the life of Isaac, Isaac told the exact same lie. Why? Because a lying spirit was transferred to him from his father. Somebody talked to me. He gave him everything that he had. So what happens is you come here as a spirit with instructions. Then you run into your last name. Somebody talked to me. <laughs> You run into your last name and all that is in that lineage, you run into that. And what happens is now you run into life and life begins to form you into an alternate personality, not who you were designed to be. If you're black, you went through all the pressures of being an African-American and all the hurts and the wounds and the disappointments and, and the assault on your identity. Identity, all of that happens to you. If you're a female, you go to another particular set of pressures and pains and sorrow. And if you're a black male, you really go through. The whole system is saying you're worthless, you're valueless. And then also, not only are you going through that as a personal experience, you're carrying in your DNA all that your forefathers went through, all the way back to slavery and all the way back to Africa. And so what happens now you develop an alternate personality that you begin to believe is you. Oh my. The devil begins to lie to you about you. But the you that you know doesn't satisfy. So now you spend your time looking for the you that you know is missing. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Yes, hallelujah. And everybody's on a quest. I don't care how much money they got. I don't care how much fame they have. There's an emptiness in their being. The number one essence of the emptiness is they don't know God. But the second aspect of it is they don't know who they are. And so they try one thing after the next thing, after the next thing, after the next thing to fill this burden and this hole that's inside of them. Am I, am I, am I helping somebody? Am I helping somebody? But the reality is yes. who you are is hidden. God hid you from you. Oh my. Life hid you from you. And unless you have a born again experience, you'll never know who you are. But let me even take it further than that. Not just a born again experience, you need a prophetic experience. My God. Because there are many believers who are born again, but are still in the battle of questioning who am I? What am I? Why was I called to be? That's why God gave prophetic ministry. Okay. To confirm. It's called the ministry of confirmation. The ministry of confirmation prophetically is designed to reveal you to you. When you hear people say things like, well, all prophecy is confirmation. No, that's not. That's not accurate. <laughs> Some prophecy is an opening word. For example, when Peter was fasting and the Bible says in the heavens opened, when they opened, it was revealed to Peter that the gospel was going to the Gentiles. That was not confirmation because Peter knew nothing about it, had no idea what was going to happen, never thought about it. It was an opening word. Some words are opening words. Some prophetic words open up to you what you did not know about you. Somebody talk to me. Yes. A dimension yes. of grace and potential and skills deposited in you that you had no idea that was there. I always say this, I, and it's offensive to some people, but I mean it sincerely. I feel sorry for people in nonprofit churches. I really do. Because they're wandering around wandering around, taking skills tests and other things, but they don't know who they are. Am I talking to somebody? 
four levels of, or three levels of intellect, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Those three things form intellect. But there's the fourth dimension of intellect, dreams, visions, revelation, and the prophetic. And I talk to somebody. Without that dimension of intellect, you're not operating at full capacity. Mm, 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 mm. Where there's a hidden wall with you on the other side. There's a verse here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Here's what is one of my favorite verses. It says, For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of a man which is in him? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So what? Man knows the things of a man. What is that saying? Everything about you is encoded, written in your spirit. Man. It's mm -hmm. encoded in there. Everything, every capacity, every purpose is all in your spirit. That's why, let me share this with you. I've been prophesying now for 52, 52 years. I'm 70 years old. I started prophesying when I was 18. I've learned some things about the prophet. I don't know everything, and nobody does, but I know, I, know, I, I know things about it. One of the things we misunderstand about the prophetic is prophecy doesn't come from heaven. You've been listening to me. The prophet is touching a person's spirit. Be calleth unto deep. So when I'm prophesying to a person, what I'm actually doing is going from the outer court to the inner court to the most holy of holies. I'm going to their spirit because the scripture says, for what man knows the things of a man, say the spirit of man is there. So everything about you is encoded in your spirit. Everything, every, every experience you've ever had, every sorrow, every pain, every relative, every purpose, or every name of every person you've ever met, because the spirit can't forget the soul deteriorates, which is the mind, but the spirit doesn't. Everything about you. It's locked up in your spirit. That is why the prophetic dimension, which the Hebrew word is Sheba, breaks open what you are and causes you to see you. Oh, God, am I helping somebody? Mm -mm -mm. I just heard the angel Lord say this to you this morning. Hear me carefully. He said, the next six months, will be a season of revelation visitation for those on this line. And I heard the angel said, if you stay in a continuous place of praise and worship, I'm going to open up you to you. And I'm going to amaze you as I reveal you to you. And you are going to come to a place of amazement and wonder and say, God, I never knew that you encoded this in my being. Oh, my, no, nah, no. Nah. I hear the angel Lord say, it grieves me when my people live below their capacity. It grieves me when the alt alternate personality that life and the devil created dominates you and you're limping through your life, never able to stand tall. So, but the angel Lord said, I come today to break the false personality. Mm. You are revelation, visitation of who you are. And Angelo said you will no longer have self, low self-esteem. You will no longer have self-loathing. You will no longer despise yourself. And you will no longer feel that you're less because I come to heal you and restore you and give you back the missing part. I receive. Send it to the earth with your assignment. Yeah. And so here the angel said, the next six months, my precious ones, you will hear my voice like you've never heard me. Thank you, Holy I will wake you up in the morning and whisper in your ear. I will put you in situations that you discover and say, God, I never knew I had this in me. See, you see. shall take things off the junk pile and use them. For these are the days of your restoration. Somebody talk to me and give God some prayer. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Father. Another verse you. says this. Said, a man's spirit shall sustain his infirmity. 
but a wounded spirit who can bear. Let me say that verse again. A man's spirit, I should have wrote the verse down, I did, shall sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. Health in your spirit will give you health in your body. Woo, thank you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You let God, I, I, you, know, you know what a hypochondriac is? I believe that's the correct word. That's the person who's always sick. Every time some kind of word comes along, sickness comes along, they got it. Why? Because they're wounded in their spirit. But a man's spirit, when your spirit is well, it sustains your infirmity. Every infirmity, not just your physical infirmities, but your emotional infirmities. What you went through as a child, what mom and daddy did to you, what racism did to you, what what. What, what sexism did to you, what poverty did to you, all those things are healed when your spirit is made strong. A mm. man's spirit. That's why your prayer time is important because you get your healing in the closet. You get your identity in the presence of God. Listen, I grew up in a housing project in New York City with a strange last name called Prude. <laughs> we went through a lot of stuff behind that. And my mother was saved, so we couldn't go to the club. We couldn't do nothing that anybody else did. That was, a, again, another thing that impacted my life. And, then, and we was broke. So all those things impacted me as I grew up. Drove me in the street, made me become a criminal. But after I got saved, God began to reveal me to me. I wrote my first book. With, I don't even have a high school diploma. I've written 56 books. I don't have a high school diploma. You hear what I'm saying? I have a network of churches around the world. I don't even have a high school diploma. Say amen, somebody. Amen. For I have an accredited Bible college. I don't have a high school diploma. I've been talking to somebody. I have a school of prophets that's now 30 years old. 30 years old. I wrote all the curriculum for it. I didn't know it was in me. God had to oh. reveal me to me. Yes. He had to give me an assignment that I didn't think I had the capacity to do. Oh, my. Somebody talked to me and I had to step out and do it and find out, man, there's a reservoir down in my spirit that I did not know was there. Am I, am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? God had to Come reveal on. me to me. And the devil had given me a personality. He told me I was a crook, criminal, con man. Uh, he was mm -hmm. using the inherent grace gifts that were in me, the latent potential in me, because the devil has knowledge. The Bible says in Daniel that he seals up the sum. What does that mean? That means the devil knows everything that a created being could know. That is not omniscience. Omniscience means to know everything. To seal up the sum means he knows everything a created being could know. Uh, another explanation of that is the serpent in Hebrew is called the nakash. Nakash is the word. And the word nakash means to learn by observation. So the devil has spent eons studying man. So he knows trends, proclivities, patterns. He knows all that stuff. And he, what he does is he tries to hijack it when you don't know who you are. Am I talking to somebody? When you're hid from you and you're a mystery to you, the devil knows what was deposited in you. How does he know it? Because he knows lineage. He knows who your granddaddy was. He knows what demons he was able to put in your granddaddy's life. Say amen, talk to me. Hello, somebody. You know what your granddaddy missed, what your grandmother missed, what they were called to do. And so when you hit the earth realm, he has the, called the will of the devil. It's like there's the will of God, then there's the will of the devil, the devil's will for you. That he begins to send his apostles and prophets. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And to reinforce the demonic plan for your life. Am I talking to somebody? Oh my God. That's why the prophetic dimension is so, so, so important. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1. Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. It says, Who is a wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? Now, the word interpretation there is the Hebrew word pesher, 
P-E-S-H-E-R. The word pressure means an interpreter, the one who stands in the office of the interpreter. Okay. That doesn't mean one that interprets dreams, one who can interpret times, seasons, behaviors, Ooh. patterns, trends. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus. So who knows the interpretation of thing? A man's wisdom makes his face to shine. When you get an interpretation of you, it'll make your face to shine. Am I talking to somebody? Why is my face shining? Because my spirit, man, is lit up with purpose. Am I helping somebody? Yeah. When I get an interpretation of you, when you get an interpretation of you, nobody can stop you. Hallelujah. You become unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Set your face like a flint because you say, I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. It makes your face to shine. All right. The glory of God is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. So the show of the face stuff, witness against them. I see this oftentimes. I see people get healed. One of the key characteristics I see when people get healed is, is their countenance changes <laughs> because something happened in their spirit. Yes. Man's wisdom makes his face to shine. When you get an interpretation of you, and notice the next part, and the boldness of his face shall not be changed. When you get an interpretation of you, you become bold as a lion. You become relentless. You're not persuaded. You don't get hooked up with the wrong people, with the people that's not going your way. You cast aside dream killers, faithless people. Say amen, somebody. Those that don't like you, that's all right. You have to like me. I like me. I'm happy with me. Talk to me, somebody in this house right now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You become bold. When God called me to the prophetic at 18 years old, when I first got saved and I came out of crime in New York City, I was a real criminal. I was no hubcap stealer. I didn't snatch pocketbooks. I was a genuine criminal. Amen. <laughs> God saved me. Saved me out of that. And call me to the prophetic. I didn't have no understanding. I, my mother was prophetic, very, very prophetic. So it was my grandmother. Uh, but I still didn't understand it. He gave me a verse. Uh, when I think I was about 18, uh, maybe 18 and a half, 19 years old, just been saved. Gave me a verse out of Luke chapter one, I think verse 78. He said, that child shall be called the prophet of the most high. God gave me that verse. I didn't understand what that meant. When he said, I'm going to be called the prophet. I had no understanding uh, what that meant was the very first verse that ever became real to me uh, or, or, or God may jump off the page. And so shortly after that, I gave my first prophetic word. It was broken up, shattered, <laughs> couldn't be un understood, but it came out of me. I didn't even understand why, how it came out, but it did. And then God began to remind me that even when I was in the world, I'd be high as a kite. And I would say to people, you know something, I can tell you about yourself. I was prophesying by grace gift before I got saved. Somebody talked to me, somebody talked to me, it was down in me. And God began to reveal me to me. Mm -hmm. now, here's what happened. As I began to move in the prophetic, I got a lot of persecution. Oh God, it's back in the 70s. People told me I thought I was a wonder. I didn't know what they meant. I thought when you got saved, went all the way. I was surprised when I got in the church that people didn't believe their own testimony. Talk to me. Didn't even believe the stuff that they convinced me was real. And I went through persecution. But guess what? There came a point in my life that I had a, an interpretation of who I was. I to to and when I got an interpretation of who I was, it made my face to shine. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Made my face to shine. I came to a place that I could not be stopped. And so starting the School of the Prophets 30 years ago, they persecuted me, told me you couldn't teach nobody to prophesy. There was no such thing as the School of the Prophets. But guess what? My face was shining. Yes. And I was bold because I had an interpretation. Yes. Oh, Thank you, Lord. And 30 years later, some of the same people's children who persecuted me came to my school to learn how to start their own school. Am I talking to somebody? The Lord says, listen, buy the truth and sell it not. Mm. You got to purchase 
the depths of wisdom that is needed to find out who you are. Oh God, am I talking to somebody? Okay. Am, I talking oh, somebody? am I talking to somebody? Yes, you are. It's going to cost you something and you're going to have to be willing to give up something mm. to find out what you really are. Oh God, am I talking to somebody? Yes. I just heard the angel say this, my precious children. There's so many lies the devil's told you about you. Mm-hmm. But I come to pour truth upon you. Oh God. That you may no longer be confused about your purpose. Thank you. Uh, but angel says some of you are called to love, but you're full of anger because of pain. Some of you are called to say much and teach, but you are quiet because it's become a defense mechanism to hide your pain. Oh, God. But here the angel said, I'm coming to set you free today. Amen. Come on, put your hands up and give God some praise. Give God Thank some you, praise. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen to this. One of the ways that God uses to begin to reveal you to you are dreams. Mm. Mm-hmm. Dreams, dreams, dreams. Remember this. Dreams do not come to you. Dreams come out of you. Because mm. where's the kingdom at? The kingdom of heaven is within you. Yeah. And dreams come out of you. God gives you dreams to show you to you. I had a dream about two years ago. And in this dream, my father was with me in the apartment that we were raising as children. Mm-hmm. And he said something to me and I got angry. I started cussing at him. In the mm-hmm. dream. And when I woke up, God said, you still got some resentment from your father. I'm thinking, well, I'm 69 years old at that time. He said, you still got it in your heart. I got to get it out of you. Oh, come on, talk to me somebody. Listen to this verse. Job chapter 33 Verses 14 through 18. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceives it not. No, 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 nothing. Listen to this. Many times when you are awake, God is trying to speak to you about you, but you can't hear it. Oh, talk to me. If you've been rejected all your life and God begins to tell you something that shows you acceptance, you can't receive it because you're used to rejection. I'm going to talk to somebody. So in a dream, in a visit of the night when deep sleep falls upon men and slumbering upon the bed, then he opens the ears of man. He can't talk to you while you're awoke. Because you're still processing your now. Oh, God, am I talking to somebody? But so he puts you into REM sleep. Then he opens the ears of man. That means your spirit. And he seals up their instruction. Listen to this. Listen to this. How many ever had a dream and you forgot it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Certainly. We all do that. We forget our dreams. Guess what? Sometimes when you forget your dream, it was the purpose of God that you forgot it. Mm -hmm. Why? Remember, your spirit man never forgets anything. Your mental recall may forget it. So here's what God is doing. He is reprogramming you by a dream. He puts the dream in you to put a new code in you, a new set of instructions down inside of you. But he makes you forget it so that you don't interfere with it. Somebody talk to me, my God. And you'll find yourself doing something that you thought you just thought of, but really you're following a dream. Oh God, I'm not talking to somebody. Help me, Lord, help me. You may say one day, you know, I think I'm going to go to Macy's and go shopping. 
when you go to make sure that day and go shopping, you run into somebody that whatever, whatever, and one connection leads to the next thing. That didn't happen accidentally. It happened in the dream. Mm. Oh, God. Uh huh. So he sealed up your instruction. He hid from you the new you that you might begin to act out the new you and discover, man, I've changed. God, am I, am I, am I helping somebody? Listen to verse 17. That he may withdraw man from his purpose. He keeps you back from being cognizant of the fact that he's doing something in your life till you discover that he did something in your life. And you have this sense like, I'm, I'm just something different about me. I'm walking different. I'm acting different. I'm moving different. I'm behaving different. Uh, uh, my, 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 my desires are different. I used to, I used to like pumpkin pie. Wait, 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 wait a minute. We all black folks. We don't like pumpkin pie. Let me try that again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to like apple pie, but now all of a sudden I like sweet potato pie. Say amen, somebody. Oh my, you, oh think it's co- you think it's coincidental or accidental? They don't know. God, God put an instruction down in you to make mm-hmm. it more perfectly line up with the you that you came to the earth to be. And I call Thank you. you. I receive the you that you came to the earth to be. Verse eight. He keepeth back his soul from the pit. Your problem is in your soul. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. It's all that stuff that came down your generational line that's in your soul. And so he said, I got to put something in your spirit to protect you from your soul. Praise the Lord. Because your soul is going to lead you to the pit. Mm -hmm. We need to stop Mm -hmm. saying stuff like, well, this is just the way that I am. Stop saying that. Mm -hmm. Come on, say amen, somebody. Well, this is just the way that I am. No, this is not just the way that I am. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. New creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things become new. You got to stop saying stuff like, you know, I'm just keeping it real. Don't keep it real. <laughs> keep it right. Oh, my God, righteous. Come on, I'm not talking to somebody. Yes. I'm not talking to somebody. God wants to bring transformation to your life. Now, last part of this. Find yourself a prophetic church where the prophets are operating so that prophetically God can deposit in you and open up you to you. Now, I'm not telling nobody to leave the church. I'm just telling you what you should do. Go where you can get revelation, visitation of who you are. Some of the greatest key words in my life or key moments came from a prophetic word that opened up a hidden stream that was in me, that was hidden from me. When the Lord told me to write my first book, I wrote that book 20 something, no, no. 30 something years ago, I wrote the book. I couldn't believe I could write a book. <laughs> Not me. I didn't get out of junior high school. <laughs> Stay in somebody. Amen. But it was in me. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Most definitely. There's so much in you. Now, watch this. I'm going back to my key verse. It says, For you are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Yes, hallelujah. As long as you're holding on to you, you will never find you. Mm-mm-mm. Uh-oh. Well, this the way that I am. My mother was like this. My grandmother was like this. That's why they all messed up. Mm-mm-mm. There's some generational curses that you need to get rid of. Hello, somebody. There's some generational Amen. demonic spirits that have come down through your lineage that you need to shed and say, I refuse to be like my forefathers. Mm-hmm. All the women in your family never could keep a husband. You need to break mm-hmm. that spirit. Say amen. Talk to me. Amen. All the men in the family made children and never, never raised them. You need to break that spirit. Come on, somebody talk. That's not me. That's not my lineage. I'm not like that. I'm not, I dare not say well, this is the way that I am. This is the way I used to be. Amen. Oh, God, am I talking to somebody? Am no I talking longer. To somebody? No longer. 
Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. He says this. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that is in thee also. Paul writes to Timothy and says, the faith that's in you was in your grandmother, it was in your mother, and it was passed on to you. What are you going to send down your generational line? What are you going to send to the next generation? That's powerful. God, am I talking to somebody? Yes. Are you going to send demonic personality dysfunctional patterns? Or are you going to send down what you allow, allow God to do in you so that they would come forward reflecting what God did in you. But it can't happen until you let God reveal you to you. Somebody give God some praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. God. Let me pray for you. Father, I bring these people to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you are a deliverer. Yes, Lord. And Lord God, whatever the process of life they've been through, whatever the pain has been, whatever the sorrow has been, whatever the difficulty has been, whatever lies the devil has told them, whatever came down that generation line, I take authority over and I cancel it in the name of Amen. Jesus. And I speak a new beginning for them in the name of Jesus. They will walk, Lord, in newness of life. And you would give them such clarity that they would have joy and that their faces would begin to shine. As they begin to understand that they're not failures. They're not angry people. They're not people of low self-esteem. But they're people of greatness. Yes, God. And I thank you for it. I receive. In Jesus' name. And we give God praise for it. I receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, bless y'all. Let me give it back to the woman of God. I'm sorry I had to be so short. Maybe the next time I can come back and we'll spend more time. And they can giving it back to you. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle Pru. God bless you. God bless you. May your day be filled with the blessings of the Lord and the insight and the strength <laughs> to be able to do all the things that you um, have set out to do on this day. We know you're busy and we thank you so much for coming. I love you. God bless you. And I will definitely have you again soon. Amen. All right. Bless everybody. I got to run. Thank you much. Hope Bye. We love you. Hope we helped you. Amen. Yes, you did. Thank you so much.